What's going on, guys? I appreciate those of you that were waiting on the stream to start. For those of you watching the replay, though, make sure to subscribe, turn on all notifications, and hit that thumbs up. Get those alerts so you can take part in these live chats whenever we do them. Those of you that are watching the replay, if you want to skip the friendly banter between myself and the live chat, I would say scroll to about the 10 minute or so mark and we'll dive into the topic because I like to give the live chat an opportunity to get here live for those that want to be here. So we might as well start things off like we always do where I put it. Center of the day, the uh, topic of controversy from time to time for no real good reason, to be honest with you, is Blue Atlas Atlantis. I keep forgetting I've been wanting to wear this one. I literally had somebody on my center of the day post ask me if I could review this. I'm like, yeah, I reviewed it last year. I reviewed it a long time ago, actually. I, I'll never understand the, you know, negative press around this one from anonymous profiles on the Internet uh, because this is actually a solid fragrance. Is it special? No. Is it good? Yeah, it's good. Good performer. Great everyday wear that is a little different from all the other stuff in its price range, $100 price range. People want to say it's overpriced. That smells like a, a designer that goes for $150, bucks, 130 to 150 bucks USD for 100 ml. When you look at it that way, it's less than everything else it's categorized with. So I never understood the hate for this fragrance because it's it's a solid fragrance, beautiful, fruity, apricot, peach kind of smell. And when you hear that, you may think it's feminine. Not really. Iris and violet. Still, you're starting to think feminine. Not really. It's more soapy than, than powdery. There's a little bit of powder. And it's dominated by clean musk. It's a nice, soapy, clean musk fragrance with a different fruity nuance than the run-of-the-mill stuff. It's not dominated by grapefruit and bergamot, though they, those are in here. They don't dominate the top. No, this it's kind of different. Not super unique or anything, but a little different from the rest. It's a decent performer. It's, you know, slightly above average type of longevity. Wife's a big fan of the way it smells, so added bonus. Yeah, good stuff. I've been meaning to throw this one in the rotation for a while. Blue Atlas Atlantis. There's nothing wrong with those guys. Go on Etsy and get a decant. There's a bunch of sellers on Etsy. They're selling a multitude of sizes. And try this one because as far as I know, Blue Atlas still isn't selling samples. And we don't have to blind buy it. So because if you go to taking, trusting the opinions of the anonymous trolls, they'll tell you not to trust people like me's opinion. And then you can't trust anybody's opinion, but your own is the God's honest truth. So get yourself a sample and try this one for yourself. You may end up wanting a bottle. It's not that bad. It's actually pretty good, guys. So let's see who's got what going on in the chat here. Wow, that ad is taking forever. Let me click skip. Climatics in the house. What's going on, big dog? How are you? Nomadic Edge. I like the name. I like the name. Eight and Bob Original. Never really spent any time with that one. Jamie, good to see you. Rasasi Satur Ta. I only have Ra. I believe you're supposed to roll the R. Satur Ra is the only one I have. What's going on, Hurricane T-Bag? Good to see you, big dog. Thomas, what's going on? Manuel, Ross the Boss. Sin of the day, Sphinx. Okay, so it's funny you say that because... Muhammad's back from Egypt, so that's why I haven't heard from him in like a month. He's been in Egypt. He messaged me the other day. He, uh, I think I, some of you heard me talk about this. He accidentally sent the package, the new ones, Oceanic Symphony, um, as well as the pistachio fragrance. Pista Creme de pistachio, I believe is the name of it. They're right there. I literally got the package in today. Uh, he had sent them to Colorado, but he, he sent out another package to get them to me. So I appreciate that. So tomorrow's live stream, we're going to bust those open. I literally opened the package and put them right there to the side. Haven't opened the actual fragrance boxes, not messing with them. We're going to save that for, that'll be Friday's live stream. So also Argos dropped their four new releases, just picked up Nemi and Lion. I thought the new Triumph box is X straight, had new notes, just higher concentration. Uh, I haven't looked at all because I don't want to know. I want to go in completely blind to the new releases. I have not looked at a single note breakdown. I haven't looked at names, which I knew Nemi and Lion and Triumph and Bobby's x were coming already. But as far as the names of the new stuff, I don't want to know anything. I know Christian's going to send them my way. We're going to end up doing a live stream together at some point in the very near future. I want to go in blind. I don't want to have expectation because when you start looking at no breakdowns, you create expectation with what you think it's going to smell like. And you start formulating that in your head. That's why most of the time I try my best. Like, I don't know what the hell the notes are on these two. I have no idea, and I don't want to know. I want to go in blind because it's a good way to test yourself and start to train your nose and start to figure out what things smell like. That's actually, believe it or not, at least it works for me. That's that's the way I've always liked to do it, and it's fun for me that way. It's, it's always just kind of testing myself. So I haven't looked at any of this. Somebody sent them to me. Uh, actually, Sean, I'm sure he's in here. 
Sean Connolly sent me the notes. It was like, send them to me in IG. And I, I told him, I said, man, I scrolled right past those pictures because I don't want to know. So you're not a regular, you're a regular on my channel. You know, I don't want to know because <laughs> these bunch of people are excited. I'm excited too. New releases from Argos, always an exciting thing. Rocking Ralph's Club, the original today. What's going on, Dakota? Glad to see the hurricane came. It, it rained for just a little while and that was it. Like literally while it was, you know, flooding, the big bend, you know, may God be with everybody in the big bend and hopefully everything gets situated for him quickly. The sun was shining. I was on, I actually rode my motorcycle to the gym when it was like nailing the coast. So I was very fortunate. Like I'm glad we didn't leave to play it safe. It would have been a waste, but once it got closer and it was looking like the track was going to be what was originally projected, it was like, yeah, we don't need to leave. We're going to get some outer bands at the most, which is exactly what happened. We got like one outer band. Very, very fortunate for anybody that did get hit by it. Prayers are with you. I've been praying the last couple. Of, I added everybody in the Big Ben to my prayers, nightly prayers, the last two nights. So, Rockin' St. Kitts, 18 likes. I'll see 45, 46. And if I refresh, I'll probably have a little bit more. Masoni Wave. Okay, that's an excellent choice. That's one I was going to pull out to wear. When I decided to do this, I was looking at the collection. I was like, you know what? I haven't done that. I think I did a summer one for 2022, maybe. Or I don't even remember if I did one at all last year. For Maybe maybe I did designer or something. Because every year or so, it's easy to update when you get so many fragrances. Because some of these 10 did change. Some stuff's never going to change. <laughs> but some of the, I mean, you can see some of them right here. And those of you that follow me on Instagram, we'll talk about Dior Own Parfum first. Because that, that was obvious. I made a post about that last night fresh winter scents with good projections. So we'll save all questions till after the topic. We typically don't really do much as far as questions till after the fact. So and unless it's one of those just, hey, let's chat streams, which this is not. This is just, you know, giving everybody a chance to get settled in before we dive into the topic. I'm Rude Silver Birch. Cold Woody Fig Aromatic. Rave Now Intense. Haven't tried that. Hello from Romania. How are you? Glad you were able to make it. A few minutes sitting in the parking lot of the gym waiting for my pre-workout to kick in. Well, I hope you have a great workout, my man. I had a great leg day today. Latafa's Ragba. Aqua Essenziale Blue. You can't go wrong. Believe it or not, had to be removed. There's a ton of great stuff that's not going to – some of you better. I can't believe this didn't make it. I can't believe that didn't make it. And let's go ahead and get it out the way. Believe it or not, Aqua Essenziale Blue had to get removed. Because I couldn't flood this with multiple blue fragrances. I just couldn't. Because I've really picked up some great shit the last year. So I had to be honest with myself here. I love that fragrance. It just it couldn't make the final 10. Final 20? Absolutely. Out of like 13, 1400 fragrances, final to make top 20. That would be that's remarkable. Hello from London, wearing ours in pure. Scent of the day, Coco Loco. I haven't worn that one in a couple of weeks. I need to put that back in the rotation too. Another one wearing Coco Loco. Good to see. Center of the Bay, one of the best names out there. Let's see, through Hurricane. Very cool. 10 4. Hello, folks. Ross, hope you're doing well. It's nice to see your collection is growing. Could you please advise me some good clones of Azaro, the most wanted parfum? Uh, no, I don't know of any, uh, but I would strongly suggest save the few dollars extra for the extra week or two you would need to, to get it and get the most wanted parfum. It's not too often you're going to hear me recommend a clone of a designer. Not too often. There are it's like there's certain exceptions. F La Parfum. It is it is really all that in a bag of chips when it comes to being a, a $30, $29 Wyla Parfum clone. But even then, you could just get Wyla Parfum for like 80 bucks. You know, so no, I, I actually cannot recommend it, unfortunately. Never tried this one. There he is. I figured he was in the chat. What's going on, Sean? $5 Super Chat. Unbox Mr. Maritime today. I usually don't like aquatics, but this is great. Ross, I think it's calling me. A bunch of people have been, been egging me on about it too, man. I, I'm probably going to get it within the next month because I ended up getting those, those fragrances from Fragrance Buy because I was like, well, Mr. Maritime can wait, but the, the Ambassador fragrances were they're starting to sell. So it's like, shit, let me hurry and pull the trigger on those. So that's what pushed my purchase of Mr. Maritime a little bit, but I appreciate the $5 super chat. 
Let's get to these last couple super chats because we're at the 10 minute mark. We'll go ahead and get into it real quick. Volcanus, the king of the super chat, has arrived. I appreciate you, big dog. BDK, Passe Soir X Straight. That's the new release, right? The X Straight's the new one. And I haven't tried that. Definitely let me know in a little bit. I uh, hope, hope I don't miss the comment. But let me know what you think about it. Jared's in the house. I appreciate the $5 super chat, Jared. Thank you, man. So, guys, we're. Uh, I'm going to skip ahead just a little bit and kind of stop right there because we'll go ahead and dive into this. So the one that's never going to change. This is never, ever, 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 ever not going to be there. This is a 75 ml Dior Homme Parfum 2019 bottle right before they changed to the 2020s. I have two of these. So it got me all in my feels last night when I was putting this on, but pulling these out. And I was like, because I'd already made the thumbnail and I knew the, this and Sidrap was they were going to be in here. Obviously, they're in the thumbnail. Obviously, those two are up. Should probably do that one next. Anyways, I was like, let me spray it. It's been a while. I sprayed one on my arm, my forearm. And I was like, oh, what the hell? Let me spray one on my neck. Two sprays. That's all I smelled at the gym today. I sprayed these two sprays at like nine o'clock last night after I showered. This was basically what I wore out the shower. Actually, yeah, this is exactly what I wore out the shower. Wife was like, oh, God, you smell good. That's powdery. She said, that's iris, huh? I said, yes. Yeah. So I explained to her what it was. I said, oh, yeah, that smells really good. Uh, we're doing some things around the apartment. She kept she was like, God, you are strong. <laughs> She's like, I can't. I, that's all I smell the whole time you're here. So, yeah, there's that. And then today when I woke up, that's all I could smell still. And I was like, oh, shit. This is going to get cloying while I work out. I, I did legs, wore a hoodie for half of it and everything, but. It's hot at my gym, guys, so my body heat raised really fast. So all I could smell today, it finally wore off like two hours ago to where it's just like a skin scent. I'm sure if I go, I'm, it's still there. It's still, I didn't spray nothing right here. It's still there, but I basically sprayed this over the spray on the back because it's still there. But point being, that was just a little tidbit about the situation. But the reason for this one, I really believe this is the greatest iris fragrance ever created. Over my own creations with Claude and collaboration was the horror off even. Like, don't me wrong. I super, super loved the two that came out. They're exactly what I wanted them to be. They're perfect for what I wanted. But this is special. This is special. Believe the hype, guys. This is an animalic iris. A lot of this rough and rugged leather accord, rich, dark, um, there's a bit of this oud feel to it. There's a rich rose and you starts to settle into a creamy sandalwood. It does change drastically because it goes from very dark to very creamy as it changes. The iris isn't the main note like it is with the intense where it's extremely powdery, waxy, you know, fantasy iris note here. It's still an iris dominance, but not as much as that animalistic leathery feel at the top. This is technically classified as a leather fragrance because the leather accord is the most forward note you're going to get from this. And it goes into the performance with my little story prior to this. It's ridiculous. I've never sprayed it more than four times and wearing two sprays since yesterday makes me wonder why the hell am I spraying it more than twice? I don't know what the 100 ml that's been around since 2020 is like. I've never tried the newest formula. Supposedly, it's the same formula. I've heard people say it's slightly fresher, maybe not as strong. All I can do is speak from what I have, and this is a freaking monstrous beast, one of the strongest fragrances in my collection. And like I said, it makes me wonder, why was I wearing four sprays in the past? Two sprays definitely gets the job done with power and longevity. This stuff is crazy, and I seldom wear it, but it is so special. This really is one of the five – you guys have heard me say this before. One of the five best fragrances I've ever smelled in my life. Like if this was a keep five, this would still make it. If this was a keep three, it would still make it. It couldn't be the only one because I couldn't wear this year round. I could not. But if I would just had a three-fragrance wardrobe to keep forever and ever, this would be one of the three. So I got to have some fresh stuff and all that, <laughs> some more wearable stuff. Not the most wearable thing all the time, obviously, but ridiculous. Dior Homme Parfum. That should be very, very obvious for a lot of you. And then, like I said, we'll get get the ones in the thumbnail out the way. Sidrap Waze. I sing this fragrance's praises all the time. Now, this, this is hyper versatile. This could potentially be in that three. 
and five if I was to do three or five because of the versatility of this. This is a Swiss Army knife fragrance for this, for me. This is very good in every situation and in every season. It's great on dates. It's great casually with a tank top. It's great going to work in an office setting outdoors. Works fine in the summer, works fine in the winter, and everything in between. God, it's beautiful. Sharp lemon, fruity basket full of fruits with this dry woody cedar smell, a little bit of leather. It's so good. Above average performance, nothing monstrous, but definitely above average performance. And you can get this one for a really good price for 120 ml you can find in the $70 range. Let's call it $65 to $85 from discounters, somewhere in that range. If you pay anywhere in that range, you're doing great. You don't have to get it for $65 bucks to feel like you got a deal, I promise. You could pay $80 for this, and you're doing great. You're going to get your money's worth if you pay $80 for this. So don't be like, oh, damn, I just bought it. I could have got it for $12 less had I just waited. I wish I'd have talked to you sooner, random bro on the internet. So if you find this one for 80 and, and you're good with spending the money in that moment, it's fine at $80, just like it is at $65, guys. So, so don't freak out over just a couple of bucks. This is well worth it. This is one of the most bang for your buck fragrances ever created, in my opinion. Even newer formulas, even the, the magnetic caps with the pressure sensitive atomizers. I have smelled some of those battle, bottles and batches. I know I have the old you know, screw cap design, but even this isn't a monster. It is above average performance, but this is highly likable by ladies. My wife loves this one. I know Andrea goes gaga for this one on, on Anthony, Curly Sense channel, for those of you that don't know who I'm talking about. They're both big fans of that. I actually turned them on to this. <laughs> so this is a phenomenal fragrance. This is a no-brainer, 10 for life. That's another one that just will not go anywhere. That will always be in this topic anytime I revamp it. So let me get caught up on a few comments real quick, and we're going to dive into the next one, which obviously you can see this on wash bottle right here. So we're going to go into that next. Reflection Man, Mont Blanc Explorer. Boz is in the house. What's going on, Boz? Good to see you, my man. All really badass names. Kyle is in the house. Hey, Ross, do you have Ultraviolet? I do not. I do not have that. I have Ultra Red Man. That's the only one. Reminds me. Oh, don't tell me that. La, 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 la. I'm not looking. I'm not reading. Let me try to look over here to unhide. Let's take that off. Okay, yeah. I don't want to know. I've been going. I literally just gave this spiel about how I like to go in blind to these things, and you go telling me what it smells like. Please don't do that, sir. <laughs> Please don't do that. <clears throat> Especially after I just finished explaining how I don't want to know. Uh, a request. You just, you and Justin, I, I, you meant Justin, I'm assuming, should do a sequel to your top five designer niche uh, with the brands. So we have discussed doing kind of like we did the other day on, on this channel um, with some of our favorite, you know, these most captivating, most interesting things we've picked up recently. There's more we could add to We're de he he's debating on maybe doing that on his channel with some different fragrances because we could go beyond five each. You know, there's there's a lot of good stuff we've picked up this year. Uh, so be on the lookout. The next stream, we usually take turns, like since it was on my channel this time, next stream is going to be on his channel. We go back and forth. Rockin' Versace Pour Home got it today. I'm assuming you're liking it. I mean, it's hard to not like that one, Boz. So for those of you just getting here, if you don't mind, hit that thumbs up for me. I greatly appreciate that. Intense Sidrap Boise. So that is superior to the original in many ways, but because of the level of versatility, I have to stick to the original. You know, but I agree. It's it's a great fragrance. Better Versensual is another great one. Good to see you, Joel. Dominique, today's leg day for me as well. Getting it in now. Well, I appreciate you listening in while you're while you're hitting your leg workout, man. I did a hack squat and then I did some wide stance uh, belt squat. I did standing calf raises, seated leg curls, uh, leg extensions, and then I did some good mornings with a plate. You know, squatting down. So I did that. That was kind of my finisher. I did two sets of those with a 45 pound plate and then dropped the plate after 15 reps and kind of did really, really slow negatives uh, to kind of burn it out with just body weight. So yeah, I had a great leg workout. Looking forward to this 2023 Zenia Intenso. I've never tried that one. I heard it's kind of like code. Turn back clock went when Zara wanted today. Just got the new EDP in last week. Not the biggest fan. I still haven't tried that one. That's the only one I haven't tried. Do a list of 20. Why do you cut it to 10? When it comes to fragrances for life topic, I usually do 10. 10 is usually the, the sweet spot. 
Did moving make you realize you got too much shit? I, I didn't need to move to realize that. So, all right, big dog. Let's go ahead and jump into this next one. How you? I can't complain. CK1 all day. Bentley momentum intense. Smelling good. I agree. I agree. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit, guys. So I am going to be skipping some of these comments. So this way I'm not too far, ba far back when I go back to the comment section. So got to scroll a little bit. Just know I see you guys, even though I'm not pinning everything. I, I'm slowly scrolling just in case anything super important catches my eye. I did. They mentioned it a little while ago in the chat. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get them at some point. I'm gonna get, they'll be heading my way, and then we're going to do a live stream with Christian talking about them. So next, this is very special occasion for me. Epic Man. So this hasn't been on the list in the past. So I want to say 2021 might be the last time I revamp this. This is special. This is kind of quintessential homage to me because this DNA is kind of in most of them. This is oriental resins, incense, rich woods, oud, stuff like that. A lot of spices and olibanum. Very, very elegant, kind of a statement making fragrance, but still kind of easy to like at the same time. Like there's oddly enough, a little bit of mass appeal to this one. I've only worn it a few times. I used to have a decant. I have this bottle. I'll never go through this bottle completely, but this is kind of during the holiday season, Thanksgiving, Christmas time. Kind of exclusively when I wear this, a lot of family get togethers and stuff. That's when I like to wear this one. This is kind of a show out for me because it exudes a different level of confidence over some of these other fragrances. Um, Reflection Man's like that for me as well. That's why this and Reflection Man are my two favorite homages. But this one, I, I think that's why I appreciate this one so much is if you like this fragrance, you're going to like a lot of fragrances from homage because pretty much this core DNA is in most of their fragrances. Like I was saying, the resins, the woods, the incenses, stuff like that. You, you can really learn what to expect from the house if you spend time with Epic Man. At least that's how I feel. I don't know how many of you with, you know, a good bit of experience with different homage fragrances maybe feel the same way, maybe feel differently. That's just kind of how I've always portrayed this fragrance. So it's very special to me. And I always say back and forth that it's, you know, between this and Reflection Man, but obviously by it making the video, the top, you know, the top 10 over Reflection Man says this is indeed my favorite from Amouage. I'm a huge fan of this house. I think Amouage is one of the best perfume brands of all time. Big, big fan of the house. And then move, jumping right into this. This is why I didn't want to put Aqua Cinziali Blue. It got bumped because, you know, I can't keep calling this the king of blue fragrances if it's not going to be the blue fragrance that I'm going to keep, right? Blue de Chanel Parfum. It's the standard bearer for greatness among blue fragrances, in my opinion. It's classy, it's elegant, it's smooth, it's refined, while still maintaining the appeal of the original that kind of spawned this generation of blue flankers, Blue de Chanel Eau de Toilette. This is rich, warm, woody, uh, synthetic, but smooth. A little bit of zestiness to the citrus at the top. This is that blue fragrance that you can wear in a professional setting and dress up very, very well. Just as easily wear it with a t-shirt and a hat like I'm wearing right now. Performance is long lasting on my skin while not being loud. I really appreciate that. I'll get whiffs of it because it has a very consistent, intimate scent bubble and sillage. Uh, where if you walk some walk by somebody within a decent range, yeah, they'll smell you, but you're not going to just punch somebody in the nose with this fragrance. But it's still like a 10 hour fragrance on my skin, even in because like when I first got this, I was I was working in the Houston heat. I've worn this one in the middle of summer in Houston. So I have a huge appreciation for this fragrance. Like I said, you can't keep calling something the king of blues, the best blue, you know, the standard bearer, the measuring stick, all these different things. I've called this fragrance if it's not going to make the 10 for life. Right. Because this isn't 10 cheapies. This isn't 10 designer, 10 niche, 10 summer, because there's different ways to categorize at a subcategory within the keep tent for life because you could do you know eight of these different videos and alter the topic slightly you know if you really want to go that far with it and some do and hell i've done it with the summer fragrances before i've done it with cheapies and so on and maybe if you guys want to see it maybe we'll revamp the cheapies for life because that has changed greatly huge difference now aqua out blue would make that because it's still a cheapie but this is, until further notice, the best blue fragrance. This is why I keep harping that I want Blue de Chanel Elixir, though I'm starting to think we'll never get it. 
I'm holding out hope that it's still a possibility. Chanel, we need Blue Day Chanel Elixir because it would be the ultimate elixir designer fragrance. It would be better than all of them. I just know it. I just know it. Maybe I'm letting my, setting myself up for, for disappointment, but this is a lifer for me. Blue Day Chanel Parfum. So I guess every two fragrances will we'll circle back to the chat. So let's see. All right, here we go. Watch this. It says, please help the channel by kindly hitting that like button. I appreciate you, sir. Jesus, let's see. To keep, 10, to keep only 10 for life, that's impossible and utterly science fiction for me. It's hard, man. This was so difficult to do. The more this, this collection grows, the more difficult it is. I literally put stuff down, like I gathered them all right here. I put a couple down and I pulled them, like Le Beau Le Parfum. And then I pulled it after a few minutes. Aqua Sins Alley Blue was right there. And then I pulled it after a few minutes because it's like, ah, you know, I'd rather keep this if I had to. It's like, ah, God, there's so many I want to keep. If I'm doing 10, it's so hard to do 10. It really is. When you start amassing the this just sheer size and amount that I had, it's, it's really difficult. It's really difficult. But you also learn how to be really, really honest with yourself on if you had to get rid of a bunch something happened and i need to sell them off just devastation and it's just like i need the money time to start selling them wheeling and dealing what am i going to keep for myself and it's 10 this is the 10 it's crazy to think but those are always a possibility it makes for a fun topic because it does change from time to time as you add new things because there's new things in here you know it's not the same 10 that it always has been dan not the man good to see you wearing 9 a.m dive indeed indeed I'm married. Amari, good to see you. Flora Botanica from Balenciaga. I love the bottle. I've never smelled the fragrance, but I love the bottle. Just hopped on. What's up, everybody? Wearing Tarathi Blue. Good to see you, Keith. Yeah, I got sock made by Master Alberto. Yeah, the king of making designer freshies, for sure. It being Fumé today since it was a cooler day. I have a carded sample of it. That's good stuff. I've been wanting to get a bottle. I just one of those things that I procrastinate getting. Leo, good to see you. Just traded some just traded for summer vibe 4.0. I'm excited. If you like pineapple, you're definitely going to like it. Just bergamot. Hey Ross, any suggestions? Citrusy sour type fragrances. We'll we'll do that stuff in the end. We'll we'll do all these. So remember, remember to ask your question again, Paul. Because I want I don't want to drag on the topic too long because I'd like to save a bunch of time for us to do stuff like that and just chat me and you guys. <sighs> Noir Ombre. Ombre Noir, you mean? With an O? Um, again, remember your question. We'll circle back to that. I do have that fragrance. Who wants to donate half or almost finished perfume bottle? I will take it. Well, here's somebody out with his hand out. There you go, guys. If y'all were looking for uh, internet panhandling, apparently Fred D is here to shake his cup at you. <laughs> Hope everyone's doing great. Just arrived in Vegas, and the day will be afternoon swim. Like Epic Man, very spicy in the good way. That's what I love about it. It's very smoky and spicy. Eric, good to see you. I saw your Sin of the Day post. That's some good stuff. Speaking of spicy and smoky, there you go. It's a baby cat clone for those that didn't know. Common Eternal Oud, love them both. Can't believe how cheap they are, right? They are good, some good fragrances. They're just challenging for me. I enjoy Interlude Black Iris. I heard good things about Reflection, but many others are just not my cup of tea. And teach their own. I just have a, I really love the style. When it comes to that that particular Middle Eastern style of the Orientals and resins, nobody does it better than they do, in my opinion. I now I haven't tried everything, but they deserve the hype. I get they're part of a hobby, but at a certain point, we just give a ton of money to these corporations for something we will wear maybe twenty five times. Well, you could always go ahead and sell all of, all of your fragrances and just keep four or five that are special to you if it bothers you. You know, nobody's nobody's putting a gun to your head to buy these fragrances. You're a big boy. You can make your own decisions, just like I do. Do I buy way too many? Sure. Am I going to stop? No. It's my favorite thing to do, to get a variety of fragrances. It's literally my favorite thing in the whole world. Besides my wife, it is my favorite thing in the whole world. So, Lyric Man's, oh, I've been needing to get a bottle of that. I love Lyric Man. That's a beautiful smoky rose, too. It's a fresher, uh, more of a kind of Turkish Rose feel from what I remember, because I had a couple ML years ago. That decant's been empty. 
Let me scroll down a little bit more. Black Iris is too much. The one spray my wife says, please go out from the house. So a lot of my own wash fragrances I can't really wear around my wife, like Enclave. Enclave just overwhelms her, overwhelms her. And I love it. And Overture, man, she just don't even, she doesn't like it. So that's frustrating. Speaking of. All right, so I'm skipping ahead. So I, I apologize that I got to skip ahead. I just don't want to be so far behind when I come back to the comments. My 10, four bottles of Angel Share, three bottles of Tobacco Lore, and three bottles of By the Fireplace. Hey, man, it is what it is. If you if if you just need the three and you just want backup bottles of it, I am. You're not going to hear me knock you. <laughs> you know, I get it. Everybody's got their certain favorites. Thanks, I'm screen shooting these recommendations now. <laughs> Noah, good to see you. Wearing CK all by myself today. Give it a thumbs up. At, but best of the house for me is still a while apart from Amen. And believe it or not, Wyla Parfum is not in here because I didn't want to do multiples of the same house. There is a need St. Laurent fragrance in here. And you guys will know, you'll understand why it's number one. Now, this is new. This is new. I couldn't help myself. Costa Azura Parfum. Now, this is probably going to surprise a lot of you because I don't wear it all that much because I still spray my decant. I got like one ml left of that 10 ml decant. I've learned to love this fragrance. When I did a review on it, I had just spent a little bit of time with it, maybe three three wearings, and it was really good, but it wasn't, like, I didn't think it was better than the Eau de Parfum. Now, clearly, I'll take this over the Eau de Parfum, and I wear the Aqua Flanker more than I wear this, because it's just so fresh, and I'm out here in this humidity, but the way the oak and the greens come across with this is so rich, it's a, kind of a, what's the way I want to describe this lemon? Let me give it a sniff. It's juicy and slightly tart. Sharp green, rich, dense wood. Has this Mediterranean feel to it, this marina type of vibe, without being super aquatic. Lasts a really long time on my skin. Has a good sillage, but isn't overwhelming. This is just... I know it technically falls into the blue fragrance category here. So it's really, I have two blue fragrances here, but this is special and I don't have, and look, I'm blue fragrance guy. I have a ridiculous, ridiculous amount of blue fragrances, like a massive collection for one person just on blue fragrances. If you factor in typical blue, which falls into sweet and powdery and woodsy and all that, and then light blue, which is your fresh, super citrus, clean musks, your aquatic, stuff like that. If you just look at blue as a whole, I have a massive collection for one person, just in blue fragrances. This stands out. This stands out. This and Blue de Chanel Parfum stand out to me. And I want to say part of me wishes I would have got 100 ml, but I'm not going to blow through this. This 50 ml, maybe ever, because it's very situational. This is a this is a situational blue for me because, again, when it comes to certain fragrances, I put in that high regard, upper echelon of the collection, which these 10 are. I wear them all the time. Very specific situations. Now, if I go in those situations and there's a stretch where it's a lot of a lot of that situation is happening, then you'll see you'll see it show up in weekly rotations a bit more. But if anybody watching this has not tried this fragrance yet and you have a similar taste to mine, Get a decant or a sample of this. Don't just spray it one. Don't just, you know, go to Sephora and spray it one time when you skin, which you can try it at Sephora, by the way. They have this. They have testers. That was how I tried the EDP the first time. That's how I tried this the first time, actually, too, before I got the decant. I encourage you to get a sample. I encourage you to spend some time with it. Give it a few wearings before you come to your conclusion on if it's worth a bottle. Don't just go off of one spray or one wearing. Because it took me more than that. Just like Vers Versace Dylan Blue, it took me a handful plus of wearings to start to appreciate that. Now I love it, which it is not in this tin. But this is special. To me, this is a special blue fragrance. Probably surprised a lot of you. And then the next one we're going to jump into, you know, it's, I got to have a tobacco fragrance. And some of you are going to be surprised that, you know, signature leather tobacco or signature tobacco's not in here. Because... The wearability on Zaharoff Signature Tobacco is higher than what I picked as far as the versatility, the everyday wearability of it. But this is just so damn good. Speaking of Argos and the excitement behind it, Triumph of Bacchus, that's a lifer. 
the best boozy tobacco, hell, my favorite tobacco scent. It, it has been for years now. Um, I take this over slightly over signature tobacco. I take this over leather tobacco. I take this over red tobacco. Just insert name of tobacco scent. Clearly, I take this over it because it's it's in the tin and those aren't. <sighs> Look how dark that is. It used to not be this color. It has richened. As time has gone on, the maceration process has done wonders for this. Not that it needed it. I didn't realize how much better it was going to get as time has progressed. Because I kind of wear this one exclusively in the cold. And it it's very rich and fruity now. Like the peach apple combo at the top is dense. The rum is robust. The tobacco and amber are rich. It is beautiful. This is a powerhouse that still has this cleanliness to the scent profile. Some of you have heard me use the term pure. It has a pure smell to it. It doesn't have the pungence and the ouds and the smokes and all that stuff. It's a very clean smell for being a boozy, fruity tobacco. It's just like I, I, I'm very curious about the extract because this is so good. This is so good. I can't wait to see what he's doing with to Triumph of Bacchus extract. That's why I'm so excited for that one because this is a masterpiece in my opinion this is my favorite tobacco scent it's it's that jam you don't need but three sprays it's a three sprayer for me four sprays if i really want to feel froggy and really make a statement here because this is a monster on my skin and it's gorgeous i look forward to wearing this one in the cooler time frames uh because that's pretty much the only time i wear it fall winter time um because it's just so it's clean, but it's dense and strong. It's super powerful and it's got an elegance to it. This one dresses up very well, but you can pull it off with a t shirt. I mean, I'll wear it with a hoodie here and there, but this one dresses up really well. This goes well with an Oxford and a sports jacket. That's for certain. So, Triumph of Bacchus. So, let me get caught up on some more of these, these comments and then we'll dive into the next two. So, we got four left. Can you believe it? They threatened to take my Adonis away. What are you talking about? Somebody threatened to take your Adonis away. Huh. My favorite is Phantom Original, and I have almost 200 bottles, half his niche. Hey, everybody's got that thing because my favorite fragrance, for some of you know exactly what it is. It's still it's in here. It's the last one we're going to talk about. But some of you don't know that are watching this. And you're like, really? Out of everything you said about these ones prior, that's your favorite? Yeah, to totally get it. Totally get it. Everybody likes what they like. You jump. Always fantastic over here. 170 plus in the chat. Only 106 likes. Let's go smash that like button. I appreciate you, Kyler. Newt's in the house. What's going on? Juliet has a gun. Ego Stratus. Blueberry done right. Yeah, Blueberry Aquatic. It is good stuff. I haven't wore it since the move. That's good stuff. Absolutely. Okay. Newt. Divine's in the house. What's going on, my man? Anisho's Mystic Experience. Have you gotten any new releases lately? Uh, a few, but I'm trying to think. Because, I mean, I, I want to say the last new release I covered in the live stream, which I'm going to wear tomorrow, I think you were here for it, was uh, Faces of Francis, which I'm, I plan on wearing this tomorrow. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. I think that's the last new release niche. That I've gotten. I mean, I have the new Sphinx fragrances, but we're going to do that tomorrow. But as far as what you'd be interested in, I got some newer release designers, but Guilty Jam wearing Hawass. What's good? My bottle of Shiaka arrived today. I'm extremely happy with it. Thank you for the recommendation. Yes, yeah, speaking of Reflection Man, if you want to go the affordable route, it's a great interpretation. Kadlaj did a great job with that. Divine's in the house. Indeed. Indeed. Gotta love when he's here. What do you think is a fair price? Well, that's the thing. Value to you is not going to be the same value to me because, like, I wouldn't pay two fifty three hundred for it, even though part of me feels like it's worth it because it's hard for me to say that because I paid one fifteen a bottle for my seventy five mls because I bought them. I literally bought it blind, one spray, turned around and bought another bottle off of one spray. I bought two bottles, and they discontinued that bottle. And made it a European exclusive in 100 ml with a new batch, like two months later, a month later, and it shot up to 250, 300 dollars. I don't even know what the prices are now. I'm sure it's even worse. So you got to decide. If it's the 75 ml, I can tell you right now, it's going to last you because again, I, two sprays was still here. That was all I smelled at the gym today. 
from yesterday's two sprays. So I, again, I can't speak on the newest formula, but people seem to really dig the 2020 bottle and the 100 ml too. So I, that's the thing. I, I really can't throw a value on it for you because what I paid for it, nobody can get it for because I did it years ago, right before they discontinued it. I got it below retail years ago. I know it's not the answer you were looking for, but that's that's an honest answer, you know. Hope local ad just played. <laughs> 10 4. Too much. Let's see. I finished off new Penhaligans, and those were so disappointing. Mr. Thompson smelled the oral intense and Valentino Womo. And portions and remedies had a baby cat dupe, Delena, La Rose dupe, etc. Okay. Finally caught a live stream. Mr. Veteran Vlogs. I love the name. Thank you for coming, sir. Thank you for coming and being here. We need a top 10 fragrances to wear to help the New York Giants beat the Dallas Cowboys list. <laughs> Good to see you, cryptic figure. So we're about to jump into the next one. That's not the point. We all have an agency to make purchases, but at a certain point, we are in hyper consumption. What's the driving factor behind that? I've got like 25 fragrances, but I wear like six. Just saying, I'm not here to deep dive psychologically into why people buy things. You know what I mean? You're talking to a guy that's got 20, 40, 60 times the number of fragrances you have. You're asking that? <laughs> you know, I have literally, if you have 25, I have 60 times the fragrances you have. So I don't even, I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, man. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm I'm the last person that's gonna be like, yes, you shouldn't buy any more fragrances. Because that's what that's all I do. I buy fragrances all the time. Fall is coming, and I'm eager for it. I'm eager for it because I like my spicy fragrances. That's the, that's the time of year for my spicy fragrances. So I get caught up a little bit more. Look up a balm of calm in portions and remedies. Okay, Triumph of Bacchus is heavenly, and I agree. Signature tobacco is great, but there's something about Argos that's phenomenal. That's what I'm saying. Like the wearability on signature tobacco is much higher. You can wear it in way more situations. Way more. It's very aromatic and leafy. You know, it's really, really good. It's phenomenal. It's my second favorite tobacco fragrance behind Triumph of Bacchus. You know. Lydia, good to see you. Purple Suede by Goldfield and Banks. Good to see you, Lydia. Haven't tried Triumph of Bacchus, but I have a decant of Danye. Yes. Danye is a beautiful, soft, blonde wood fragrance. That that um, my source sandalwood that he used really stands out in cashmere wood. It's a very soft wood fragrance. Beautiful. It's the basis for Adonis Awakens. Absolutely. I buy fragrances from them every single month. They partner with the channel as well. But I mean, I literally buy for I literally bought fragrances two days ago. I spent $360. I buy stuff from them all the time, which a bunch of people is going to chime in too. They're one of the like top three discounters in the world. The fragrances. They're very legit. Captain and Coke, John, good to see you wearing Chrome Extreme. Still the best version of Chrome, in my opinion. Still the best. So let's see. Bentley Silver Lake. Can't go wrong there. Smells like a Senza. Doesn't have the florals of a Senza, but it's pretty close. Peony and Peppercorn. I never picked that one up. Never picked that one up. So let's go ahead and dive into the next one. Kajal Om 2, underappreciated fragrance right there. So that's, speaking of, there's another one. I put Lamar right here, and Lamar had to get axed. It got axed out of this too, believe it or not, because of stuff like this, which some of you would have been like, holy crap, I can't believe you didn't put that. No, don't worry. This goes into that five best smelling fragrances I've ever put my nose on up there with your own Parfum. Vertus Vanilla Oud. Man, is this good. Holy shit, is this good. It's such a rich, creamy vanilla that's spicy, a lot of saffron. The oud, There's just a touch of oud funk here, just a little bit. Very, very woodsy, warm, ambery. It's, this is that wow factor. This is that holy shit moment when you smell this. If you're into fragrances, this is a holy shit fragrance. To a passerby, they're going to think it smells amazing, sure, but for those of you that appreciate this as an art form and treat this as a hobby in some form or fashion, this is a holy shit fragrance when you smell it. Like, holy shit, that's great. I need a bottle. That's that's what I mean when I say a holy shit fragrance. It's that good. It is that good. Performance is absurd. 
I literally, I'll never forget that whole day of the first time I smelled this, Justin was wearing it when we were in Chicago doing stuff for getting the launch ready for uh, Zed Creators 2.0. He was wearing it. It was all I smelled in that room all day, giant room. And literally that night, like, cause it was a long day. I remember looking at the time, cause he sprayed it at like eight in the morning before we left. And it was like one in the morning, we were going to do content. And he, he, I opened the door to my hotel room. He walked by me and it was like, he just sprayed it. It was from eight in the morning, those sprays. He only had like three sprays on. And it was just crazy thick sillage. This, and it was a holy shit moment for me all day. Every time I smelled it, feel free to ask Justin about who he recalls it greatly as well. Cause I kept making a point to tell him how freaking amazing he smelled. None of us smelled better than Justin Copeland that day. I don't care what you were putting on. You were not smelling better than Justin that day because he had this on. I fell in love with this fragrance. Grace, huge fan of this fragrance. We used it in some content and I scoured the internet when I got home from Chicago to find a bottle. And as some of you know, that scoured the internet to find a bottle over the last six, six months to eight months, six to nine months, I would say. Cause yeah, it's a, it was like November that I got it. So, cause I've been talking about it quite a bit since I got it. Those of you that were scouring, trying to find it, you know, it, it sells out quick as soon as it comes into stock and it doesn't come into stock in that many places all that often. But, and the pricing is crazy cause you can get this in the low 100s from discounters. And when you smell it, you'll, it, it's mind boggling that you can get it for like 120, 130. I've been seeing people get, it. I paid 180, 170. And I was totally happy with that. I bought it from Perfume Empire on eBay, uh, which I bought a ton of fragrances over the years from them. So trust and seller. This is phenomenal, guys. If you only try one fragrance from Vertus, let it be Vanilla Oud. If you only take one recommendation seriously from me, let it be Vertus Vanilla Oud. I'm not saying run out and blind buy this because it's, it's very much an enthusiast type of fragrance. Not everybody's going to appreciate this fragrance. But again, I go back to those of you that treat this as a hobby in some form or fashion and are passionate about perfumery in some way, this is a holy shit fragrance when you smell it. I, I can't guarantee that all one, if 100 people smell this that are into it that way, all 100 will feel that way. But I can, I, I can almost bet at least 80%. I would say 80 out of 100 people are going to be, holy shit, that's amazing, which that's a huge percentage i think that's a safe percentage it might even be greater than that but i know i spent a little longer on this one than others but holy shit is this amazing absolutely a lifer for two vanilla oud and you know i don't give a shit who wants to call me a shill say i'm only saying that because he's my friend this is the reason that signature tobacco couldn't be here because again i only wanted i didn't want to put more than one from brands, same brands, but Zaharoff Signature Rosé, some of you fully expected this to be here because of the praise I've given this over the years. This is one of the five best. This goes into that same five we've talked about throughout this. This is one of the five best fragrances I have ever smelled. Leather Tobacco came close with the wet, with the wow factor. It's kind of 1B to this. It's, it's phenomenal. That's a wow factor fragrance too, but this is just a little bit better. It's a little bit more unique. This is my favorite rose fragrance. This is my favorite incense fragrance because the incense really pops on me. The olibanum really comes out. The sweetness, not heavily, but there still is that vanilla sugary sweetness. Uh, the sweetness comes out more on my wife. The sweetness comes out more on Justin. Uh, I want to say the sweetness comes out more on George as well, but this is phenomenal. And again, if you only take one recommendation serious from me about Zaharoff, try this. Spend the $5 and get the 2ML sample from the website. If you use my link, you'll save 10%, which is, I get it, only $0.50 cents on $5, but it's still something. This is that jam. And some of you heard me refer to it as glue over the years because this is one that when it calms down, you'll think it's become a skin scent seven, eight, nine hours in, whatever, even six hours for some people, whatever. And if you do something to raise your body temperature, it starts pumping. The sillage just intensifies greatly. This is another one where it, it, it's happened many times where next day I'm at the gym, I start smelling like rosé again, like I just sprayed it. This is that fragrance that will come back on you if it's still on your skin. Even if it's faded greatly, if it's still on your skin, it will come back to life with enhanced body temperature if your body heat raises. 
this is phenomenal. Um, I've told him many times, even with some of the unreleased stuff, there's one that's unreleased that's going to rival it. That's it's technically his best fragrance. I can't say anything because it's going to be in the private line, but it, it's the best thing that's ever come out as a har off, even though it hasn't come out yet. But that's when this will become number two. But until that happens, this is the best from the house. Obviously, I'm I'm not trying to be biased and say Evening Mystique or Business Over Pleasure. Those are completely omitted from this because obviously I, I'm in love with those creations. But this is the best rose fragrance I've ever smelled. It's amazing on my wife, too. It's perfectly unisex. If you only try one rose fragrance, let it be this. This is 100% a lifer. Zaharoff Signature Rosé. So we've got two left. Let me get caught up on this chat again. And then Elysium. Been wearing it all week so far. Hope you're good, bud. Hit the like button for our guy. Appreciate you, my man. Appreciate you. Okay, Big Ross. CJ's in the house. What's going on, big dog? Justin, good to see you. Young Soy, what's going on, big dog? Never tried Penhaligans. I heard they are overrated. Depends, because Satoro's really good. If you like the more classy Fougere-style fragrances, like Satoro's really good. Waiting on my bottle of Shiaka. See, Josh, no worries, mate. Fair enough, John. We'll see. Going to wait until Monday, probably getting sale. Okay, so this is a conversation you guys are having. So, and it was super strong. So I bought a full bottle and noticed it wasn't as strong. Anybody else had this experience? Could be that the decant, because decants will macerate way faster. They'll mature way quicker because the alcohol will start to dissipate because those decants aren't sealed the way these bottles are. So they will spoil quicker, which means they'll macerate faster. The alcohol will dissolve quicker, and they'll technically come across as stronger because the percentage of oil to perfumer's alcohol is going to shift. I agree with that. Tanya is nice, but a bit too sharp and woody. Sharp. I'm kind of surprised to hear that word. We'll read that word. Not a fan of green or woody stuff. Well, I mean, I could see why you don't like it then. It's definitely blonde wood based. It's all about woods. My wife jumped my bones when I wore vanilla oud. You would think it would be super heavy wear, but man, what an experience. It it That is a great word. Experience. It is indeed an experience. Kenzo Ohm Eau de Parfum. This gives me the Aventus vibes. Really? That? Leather Aquatic? I teach their own. Percival's in the house wearing Italian love. For some reason, I find myself checking out auctions for Italian zest. I'd love to get that. Boy, I slept on that when you could get it for 40 bucks at discounters, and it's hell to find now. Saw it on a cruise this past summer and wish I grabbed it. Same. That's the one that I'd like to get that I haven't. I do preach about Vanilla Oud. It is phenomenal. Vanilla Oud is the truth. Truly amazing scent. Vanilla Oud gets me a compliment every time I wear it. Not exaggerating. I believe it. Ross, have you ever smelled Sand Dance by Stephanie Umber Lucas? Amazing. I have not. I'm not familiar with the brand. I like how you went ahead and changed your name, though. I know exactly who this is. Best smelling postal worker. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the artist formerly known as Rich Money Cash One. For those of you that didn't know, this is who always jumps in the live stream saying best smelling postal worker checking in. Or actually, no, it was uh, not Rich Money Cash. Sorry, Rich Money Cash. Um, bad at, I forgot. It was like one word jumbled. I know exactly who this is, but it's B-A-D, bad Some Correct me. Please type it in the chat. You know what your username was, but I know exactly who this was. But this is who always says, Best smelling postal worker checking in. He finally changed his name to it. I love that you did that. Top five Argos still. Donis Awakens, Bachu Emotel, Danye, Palace Athene, and Triumph. I mean, there's there's not even a single mediocre fragrance from the house. All phenomenal. I would say the Poor Ohm is probably the worst release, and it's not. It's a timeless scent. Violet, Bergamot, Vetiver. Timeless, masculine, everyday scent. And I mean... It's still like a 7.58 out of 10 type of fragrance. You know what I mean? Like Christian does not put out mediocrity. He only puts out great stuff. Cue the wrestling. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Are they all unisex, John? Yeah, see, my bad. See, look, there he is. Damn, it smells good in the chat. See, there's the other catchphrase. So, again, I apologize, Rich Money Cash. I got y'all confused for a second. I was like, wait, wait, wait. No, that's not him. Big fan of Percival. Fragrance and Fashion with Ron Johnson with $5 Super Chat. What's up, Ross? Happy to join today's live. Wearing a Jazzy Intensive Silver. Love that scent. It's like a refreshing drink. It's literally... Oh, wrong way, wrong way, wrong way. Right there. 
refreshing drink with tonic you can wear. That's, that's fair. I wore it. The last time I wore it was during my move here about a month ago. One of the travel days I wore it. It really is good. And it's only 15 bucks. I got to say, that's one of the steals from Latafa. It's really good. Thank you for the super chat, my man. Top five, PDM, Greenlee, Sedley, Percival, Pegasus, Awajan. I don't think there's such a thing as a bad top five from them. That's another brand that they, they put out good stuff. You know, there's no bad fragrances that I've tried. I haven't tried your Byerly's and stuff like that. I, I, there's a bunch I haven't tried, but as far as what I have tried, it's all good stuff from them. PDM is a good brand. But I got a 10 ml for 30 to 40 bucks. Percival, Layton, Wajon, Sedley, and Carlisle. Again, no such thing as a bad top five from them, you know, because I can agree with every single top five you guys are going to put out. If, if I've tried all five, like, yep, yep, that's a good one. That's a good one. Should I get a one ounce of Womo Signature? I'm a 16-year-old. Winter is cold here. That's a great move, actually. For a young man, that's a good winter scent because you still have a little bit of that arrows feel, that sweet, playful type of feel with a little, a little bit of coffee to give it some character and a soft leather accord. Nothing animalistic or advanced when it comes to leather accords. Uh, nothing rough and rugged or anything. Um, that would be a great. I think that's a great winter fragrance for a young man. Absolutely, my man. Pine Rocks in the house. How are you, sir? Do you have any VC and A fragrances? VC and A. What does that stand for? Ben Cleef and Arpels. That's got to be what it is. Ben Cleef and Arpels. No, no, I don't. I don't. I haven't tried anything from them actually. Got a sample of vanilla oud and I couldn't get the hype. But well, you're you're very snobby. <laughs> you're my favorite niche snob on the planet, though. I say that with all the love in the world, divine. I'm not surprised that you don't care for it. it. Smells like a floral vanilla type of scent. I'd love on a woman. I get a lot more spice out of it than I do florals. I, I understand what you mean with the florals, but I get a lot more spice and I get a little bit of oud funk, just a little bit. But the, yeah, you're you're very very critical when it comes to niche. Very critical. It's like I said, you're my favorite niche knob on the planet. I say it with as a term of endearment when I'm talking to you, you know, at least for the free knowledge. I, I appreciate that, Ron. Thank you, sir. Love Rosé. Yeah, Rosé is phenomenal, Lydia. It's, it's, it has to be a lifer. So we're going to go ahead and get into these last two. Let's see. You wouldn't be saying it if you didn't mean it, Ross. I believe you. Indeed, boss. Indeed. I appreciate the vote of confidence because that is indeed everything. everything that comes out of my mouth. When it comes to this channel, these fragrances, I don't, I don't lie. I don't do any of that shit contrary to troll belief. Um, but yeah, what I say, what I say is what I feel always has been. And I appreciate that boss. Thank you, man. 12 out of 10. There we go. That's a pretty high praise. Keep seeing Coco Loco ads. Yeah. Coco Loco is good stuff, man. You know, it's got a few good, what are a few good boozy fragrances you would recommend on at the moment? So do me a favor. Hold that thought. We got two left. We got two left, and then we're going to do all the questions. So let's see. Does Hindu Kush Mancera lean more woody or green? Real quick, that, that's a quick and easy one. That leans more woody. Uh, it's, it doesn't even really smell like marijuana. That's because I feel not enough people know of them and more should. Okay, so on that note, love the name. One and a half men fragrance reviews. Scent of the day is personal. Excellent choice. So let's get into these last two. So this is the Yves Saint Laurent that made the 10. And the reason is it's, it's my go-to for date night. It's my wife's favorite YSL fragrance on me. La Nuit de Lombe Le Parfum. Some of you probably assumed when I said this, there's one YSL that made it and it wasn't Y Le Parfum because that's my favorite Y. And I don't have a bunch of lines from them. I have the Y line, I have Loam and Lanoui de Loam, which Lanoui de Loam is a subsidiary flanker line to Loam. Those of you that didn't know, Lanoui de Loam is a flanker of Loam. But this still smells like the original. It's not as powdery. It's not as sweet. It's a little bit more aromatic. The fruitiness is the sweet here. There's fruity notes. Lavender, black pepper. So instead of cardamom, you got black pepper. And a little bit of powder is from lavender. I love this. It's kind of La Nuit de Lone growing up, maturing in many ways. This is more of an adult take. If La Nuit de Lone is playful and is for the teens and early 20s, got young cat out there chasing tail, 
going on, you know, multiple dates. This is for that same cat when he grows up and settles down. If he just loves that scent DNA. And maybe this was that Lana Wee DeLone was the fragrance that, you know, his now wife was always into, was always a favorite on him. Because Heidi loves Lana Wee DeLone. She loves this even more. This is why I have such an affinity and love for the Lana Wee DeLone flankers, because she loves them. And it makes me love them even more than I already did, which I already have strong feelings for this line and their flankers. Oh, Electrique, I think, is one of the most underappreciated flankers to ever come out in that line. It's Eros mixed with Lana Wee DeLone. It's amazing. Blue Electrique gets all the love, all the hype. It's, it's really good. It is really good. I don't think it's perfect like some people act, but it's, it's, it is very good. The Eau de Parfum, underappreciated. L'Intense, wildly underappreciated. And so on. There's, there's so much good going on in this line. But for me and in this household, this is the best version. This is my wife's favorite. And this had to be a lifer. This won't move. If I do this again next year, this will still be here. This has to go into that five, by the way. Because I've never revealed the full five. I always talk about three or four of them, but... This is one of the five. This would be the date night choice. This is the default option. I wear the other flankers. There's other fragrances outside of Lana Wee DeLone that I wear to dinner. I mix it up, but this is always the default pick because she loves it. Lana Wee DeLone, Le Parfum. And then last but not least, regulars know, newer to the channel may not, Invictus Aqua 2018 is still my favorite fragrance. For all of these great additions to my collection that I have gotten, this synthetic, mass appealing, slight bubble gum, fresh aquatic, powdery aquatic is still my happy fragrance. This is, this is still the best smelling fragrance I've ever smelled. This is the other one in the five. This is, this is the best smelling fragrance ever to me. And some of you are like, I can't believe that. Yeah. We like what we like, guys. Just like the gentleman that was talking about Phantom is his favorite with his multiple hundred bottle collection. This is what I was talking about, sir. I totally get it. Because what my favorite fragrance is will perplex people that it's my favorite fragrance. Some people are like, really? With all of that that you have, that is your favorite fragrance? Yeah. Yeah. It's my second bottle. This is a tester. My first bottle was a tester, too. That's why it says Invictus Aqua on the front. And I have a 50 email that a viewer sent me because he bought it off my recommendation and ended up giving him a headache. And he's like, I want to give it to you because I know it'll go to a good home and you'll wear it eventually. So I have a 50 email sitting over there in the collection too. And I don't even wear it as much as I used to. But it still makes me smile. It still makes me so happy when I smell this. Nothing's ever gotten me more compliments. No fragrance has ever gotten me more compliments in rapid succession in wearings than Invictus Aqua 2018. Some people love the 2016. It's good. I got a bunch of fragrances to smell like it. I got a little carded sample that my resident troll Sammy sent me a while back. I've smelled it. I like it. I like this more. I've always liked the 2018 more. It's still my favorite fragrance. The original Invictus used to be my favorite till I got this. I just love Invictus. That's why the Invictus line, that's why Victory and all, they started disappointing me because they started going away from the DNA so much because I'm such an Invictus and Invictus Aqua kind of guy. So naturally, all the fragrances that smell like them. I have a bunch of stuff that smells like this, the 2016 and original Invictus, with some kind of spicy twist, woody twist, this, that, and the other. So, yeah, still my favorite. This is never leaving. This is one of those five. This is my aquatic choice. This is my summertime fragrance of my five for life. Because, again, if I had to do five, just to give you guys an idea, my date night and my warm weather... Just because, because it's amazing. And then these two. My cool weather, my everyday. That's my five, if I had to narrow it down to five. That is the 10, ladies and gentlemen. If you'd be interested in seeing the 10 cheapies revamped, because that I haven't done that in a long time. It's been like two years since I revamped that. That would be wildly different from the last time I did it. That would be a wildly different 10. I could do more than 10 if you guys would be interested, but I could pick 10. 
but it'd be it's going to be quite different. Pretty much the only thing that would still make it is Aqua Cinziali Blue, and I think First Instinct Together was on the last one that would still be on it. So it's like eight new fragrances of that ten. Whereas a lot of these, there it is. I see it on YouTube. The baddest DJ. That's what it was. Okay, because YouTube's caught up. It's current. Whereas it holds my place. If I put it a certain spot, not at the bottom with the comments on a uh, on StreamYard, it'll hold my place. So, all right, let's get caught up. So we'll hang out for like another ten, maybe fifteen minutes, guys. I promise you guys, we chop it up. Then we we got business out the way. We got the topic done. Black Rose is it, look, it's phenomenal, but I still like Rose more. I still like Rose more. Van Cleef and Arpels Pour Homme is a good fragrance with rose, very gentlemanly. Five years ago, it was 20 bucks a bottle, and it got discontinued. Now it's 200 plus. Whew. Crazy how that works, huh? Ooh. I actually did that video. Uh, I picked the EDP out of taste. Out of where, if I was to just pick it out of where, based off of, you know, wearability, Boise is better because it's not as creamy. It's more woody. So it's more, it's added versatility versus the Eau de Parfum, but I think the Eau de Parfum smells better. So that's basically what it is. If you're looking for something to wear more often, I would say Boise. But if you want the one that just flat out smells better, the EDP. And if you have both, you don't need Reserve Privé. Or you could just get Reserve Privé because it's better than the uh, both of these. The reason I don't have Reserve Privé is because I have both of these. It's too redundant, which I'm still going to end up getting it at some point. I had a decan. But that's what I would say. The better smelling, EDP. The higher wearability, Boisset. Just ordered the one Royal Knight. That's the one I don't have as far as those Middle Eastern exclusives. We're all saying BS in chat. Justin knew what the fuck he was talking about. Vertu's Vanilla Oud might be my top three all-time vanilla fragrance. Right up there with Spiritus Double Vanille. How to pick up a golem. What? Gollum is in like uh, Lord of the Rings. Gollum. Let me know if you're a troll. I, I can block your ass real quick because that's a stupid question. <laughs> First and foremost, so it seems like a troll question. So by all means, let me know. Uh, Ross, getting crazy weather over there. No, just a little bit of rain. It wasn't bad. I was very, very lucky. Need a bottle of Raja Elysium Port Ohm. Oh, the Parfum Port Ohm. Okay, yeah, it smells great. Yeah, it's. It's still the best version of the three. The O Intense is my second favorite. Now, Parfum Cologne is my least favorite of the three, which they're all great. Not knocking the Parfum Cologne. It's still amazing. But the O Intense, I do like more. It's more interesting. As an owner of Vanilla Oud, I can vouch. It's a keeper for life in my collection as well. <clears throat> Center of the day, honor and glory. So Lydia is actually, fun fact, is sending me a decant. So I'm going to get to try it out before I get my hands on a bottle. And we're going to do a live stream talking about it. I agree with those five. Let's see. Why does Dior Sauvage EDT smell better, longer, and better projection than its EDP? But the EDP thing would be better, but it was it was a letdown. Any thoughts? So I prefer the EDP because it's so much spicier, uh, and mine's really strong. I got a 60 ml, and I have a launch bottle, February 2015, of Dior Sauvage Eau de Toilette. So I have the strongest of the strong. With Dior Sauvage EDT, I literally have the first batch, and it's a three-spray fragrance. It's crazy strong with three three sprays. And my EDP bottle, which is from 2019, 2020, it's from 2020. It's a 2020 batch. It's just as strong. So I don't know. It might be a you thing. You know, I don't know if you're talking like brand new batches of both or what, but just to give you some, give you an idea. My EDP is just as strong, and it's five years late. I mean, the EDP didn't come out in 2015, but I have the strongest of the strong, the bottle everybody would want that likes Sauvage. I have that bottle. I'm very fortunate, but I have the launch batch, and it's and it's the strongest Sauvage has ever been, but my EDP measures up. That's a three-spray. They're both three-spray fragrances for me. So beautiful atomizers, too. So I, I think it might be a, it, it might be a you thing, you know? Thoughts on Chez Bon? Been a while since I've smelled it, but good to see you, Mike. And uh, it's basically Bond's take on Green Irish Tweed. It's a good fragrance. If you get that, you don't need Green Irish Tweed, that's for sure. 
Uh, Joma Shop doesn't really do codes. I mean, from time to time they do, but I, I don't have any. I don't have any codes for them. Interesting. I got a spicy apple decant. I bought Layton. I couldn't stop sniffing myself. Yeah, Layton's, Layton's phenomenal, man. I am having a great day, Ruben, and I hope you're having a great day as well. Shura from Rasasi. Ross, what are your thoughts on Ancre Noir Sport? I think it's the best of the three. My least favorite is the original. I like Strim, uh, very situational evening fragrance. It's beautiful. It's just very situational, whereas uh, the Sport is ultra versatile. That's a year-round fragrance that does do better in the warm weather than the other two, obviously. It's very watery, um, very juicy bergamot, and the earthiness is really counterbalanced with that watery note. I think it's amazing, especially for like 28 bucks for a tester or whatever it is. You can get it for 30 bucks for full presentation. Ancre Noir Sport's phenomenal, man. That's one of my favorite vetiver fragrances. I've come around to vetiver quite a bit. Just bought a decan of Signature Rosé. I hope you enjoy it. Blue Stallion. Never tried that one. Let's see, Ross. Got to try the new... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to try that one. At Nemean. And I gave it a thumbs up. Look forward to giving a review, seeing if you prefer Ebean Fumé over it. So, yeah, I'd, I'd really like to try it. Because Ebean Fumé is phenomenal. It's really good. I just don't have a bottle yet. I, I still have a couple sprays. If that decant's not uh, spoiled at this point. It's been a while. Hawass didn't beat it after all. No, no, no. Hawass is phenomenal. Hawass is phenomenal. But it doesn't make me happy the way Invictus Aqua 2018 does. Joy Amin got me hooked on Guest Seduction Own Blue as my go-to line of weed to loan need. It is a really good affordable option. It's pretty close. Crazy, I know, but it's good. Yeah, and you can find it. I see it every time I go to Raw Stress for Less. doesn't matter which Raw Stress for Less and which city and which state. They're going to have guest own seductive, uh, guest seductive, own, seductive own blue. I kept screwing that up. Burlington, too, always has it. No spice bomb. That must have, that was painful. Yes, I wanted to put infrared eau de parfum over the original. I, I had it in my hand. It's funny that you say that I had infrared eau de parfum in my hand. I like it that much, guys. It almost made the 10. Try that damn fragrance. Get out and spray that fragrance. If any of you like anything about the Spice Bomb line, go try Infrared EDP this year's release. You might not feel the way I feel, but boy, if you don't spray it on your skin, you're not going to know. You got to try it. It's one of the best releases of the year, in my opinion. Safari is my number one all time. Hey, no shame in that. No shame in that. Justin's a big fan of that one. It's like that Hell's Kitchen chef liking a peanut butter and jelly sandwich as his favorite food. That's actually a fair reference. Yes. Uh, yeah. An amazing chef, but he, his favorite, his favorite meals, peanut PB and J. Yeah. That it's kind of the equivalent, not, not trying to say I'm King shit or anything, but with the experience and everything and what I do, I understand what you mean. Cause yeah, it's like something like that is, is my favorite fragrance. Simplicity wins sometimes, you know, I have not. I took sample and closest to Avent Aventus. It became my signature scent, and the performance is great. Well, it's good to know. It's good to know. The best Invictus Aqua clone. Ooh. As far as the closest I've come across to this, the 2018, that would be Halloween Man Hero, where instead of violet, because this has got violet that makes it a little powdery, that has lavender that makes it a little soapy. That's the big difference, but they're pretty close. Halloween Man Hero is pretty close to that. Because that, I guess this is discontinued because bottle prices are crazy now. Like if you go to Amazon, you're looking at 200 bucks. eBay, places like that. Like discounters aren't even stocking it anymore. It's crazy expensive. So I'm, I'm assuming it's discontinued now. And Halloween Man Hero is about the closest. Just instead of powdery violet, you get soapy lavender. That's the trade-off. Performs about the same evokes a similar feeling smells pretty much the same it's it's pretty close i would say for that specific batch like the 2018 not the 20 2016 they have way more clones of 2016 but of 2018 specifically which is my favorite halloween man hero rocking percival today love it so we got another one wearing percival today rock aware nine was my favorite all time boy that's i could tell you last time i saw that bottle good god i saw that in the mall a long time ago Back when I was wearing Rockaware hats, I used to have, since you like Rockaware, 
I used to have the Rockaware hat that had the metal R with the jewels in it. It was a $65 hat 15 years ago. You know, $65 hat back then. Yeah. <laughs> a badass hat, too. What? That was the best. I don't know what the hell happened to it. I don't have it anymore. That was the best fitting hat I've ever, best fitting seven and one eighth I've ever worn ever. It was literally the perfect fit. See, there it is. Figured I would switch it up. Yeah, I couldn't. I knew it was DA, the, the bad, something like that. But yeah, there it is. Already did that. Passed away very young. First frag she bought me. Still have the bottle, but haven't sprayed in 15 years. Too sentimental. I'm sorry to hear that, Sean. I totally get it, though. Because, you know, when I met Heidi, I was broke. I was just getting by. And that's when the collection was really cheapies. Like, what I was wearing on a regular basis was Adidas Moves. Adidas Moves. And I have that old bottle with still this much juice in it. And it's nostalgic for her. Because when we started dating, that was what I wore. She loves Adidas Moves. still have that bottle. I have newer bottles. I never wear them. Because I went through a stint where I used to wear it all the time. But, yeah, I, I totally get it. I'll never get rid of that bottle. I'll always keep a little bit of juice in it, you know. I mean, she hasn't passed, but you know, sorry for I apologize for your loss, man. But I totally get the the, the nostalgia and sentimental aspect of it. Black Rose or Roisin Dub I an, an Irish. I, I don't know. I love Wild the Parfum, but Loam EDP probably my favorite YSL. Hey, everybody's got their favorite. Make a list of ten winter fall for a teenager colognes that are cheap. Okay, well, look, as we get closer to winter, like late fall, remind me, because I'll forget right now, because it's not time. Like, uh, I got enough grief from people making a fall fragrance video for stuff I'm excited to wear, and we're still tail into summer. So, uh, yeah, it's way too early for me to do winter videos, but remember, if you really want me to do it, remember to, to remind me as we get closer, and, and I definitely will. But my first niche and how I can feel myself turning my nose up to the clones started out with, I hope I'm not turning into a snob. It may happen. Okay, go. got to go. Well, Boz, I appreciate you being here. Thank you for coming to stop by. Let me shut it down in a few minutes. Is mature and headaches. Mature? That's not a mature scent. No, man. No. No, no. No, no. Um. I don't know where you live. If you're in small town, you're not going to have a Ferragamo store. But if you have a major city near you that has one of those malls that has a Ferragamo store, you could always go over there and try it. That was the first time I tried Womo Casual Life and Womo. The other two, two other ones in their line was at a Salvatore Ferragamo store. Uh, so they do have testers. That was the first time I tried Prada Loam was at the Prada store, same mall, Galleria Mall in Houston, for those of you wondering. John Barbados store. That was the first time I tried the first John Barbados and Nick Jonas, the blue one, which is right there. I don't know. It's been like, I don't know, 20 years since the last time I smelled Givenchy pie, so I, I really don't remember. Give me a price, let me know. 10 4. On severely nose blind as far as GDP, it happens. That, yeah, that really does. I go nose blind to it too. Rick's in the house. I keep eight bottles of Dior and Parfum and two of Jimmy Choo Aqua. But hey, you got your warmer weather stuff and you got to just knock their noses out stuff with Dior and Parfum. But hey, man, I'm not going to complain. If you would have said, as long as I got 10 bottles of Dior and Parfum, I'm good. I'm not going to, hey, teach their own because I get it, man. It's phenomenal. Like I said, it's one of the greatest fragrances of all time. I love talking about this one. It's, it's an actual literal ma masterpiece. This is amazing. And Anybody that doesn't feel that way, because I get it, it's it's subjective. Anybody that doesn't feel that way about Dior and Parfum, I, I'm sorry, you feel that way. You're right to feel the way you feel. I just completely disagree with how you feel, you know. So yeah, Dior and Parfum is that jam, guys. It is the greatest iris fragrance of all time. It'll never be topped, in my opinion. And it's not even all that natural of iris. It's that waxy fake stuff. They they label it as Tuscan iris, but mm, Tuscan Tuscan iris is typically a little bit more earthy than that. But could be wrong. I didn't make the fragrance. Google five for five dollars off Joma shop. There you go. Alex Strim smells like Bella Lugosi's Dracula. 
Oof. Very gothic. Top 10. Joe Malone, Grapefruit with White Jasmine and Mint. Adonis Awakens. Apple Brandy on the Rocks. Oud Wood from Tom Ford. Penhaligans, Indemion. Coffee Break. Okay, Tim Buck 2, dropping some heavy hitter names. Vintage Green from Banana Republic. Pasha de Cartier Parfum. Hey, no shade here. And Terre de Mezzo Givray. That's an interesting tin. That's a very diverse tin, too. Extremely late for the live, but just wanted to say hi, everyone. I appreciate you coming and jumping in, Jason. We're shutting it down here in just a minute. But uh, yeah, just scroll back to about the 11-minute mark if you want to watch the topic. We did two at a time. Did two. Talked to the chat for a minute. Did two. That was kind of the way I paced it. Because I didn't want everybody to feel like I would, when I have a topic, I try to still touch base as much as I can in between. But really, I want to save the chopping it up for the end. Sean with another $5 super chat. Calling it now. Spice Bomb Ross Ur Blue makes the next 10 for life vid. You know what? If they do give me that Spice Bomb Blue, it might end up being my favorite Spice Bomb. And it might be good enough to make the 10. I don't know. But I feel like we've got enough time to wait to see because it, I don't think it's going to be the next release. I think, honestly, the next release is Spice Bomb Elixir. The designers are all doing the Elixir thing right now. So, Or Spice Bomb Parfum. I mean, you guys have heard me say that. I think that's the next three. Parfum, Elixir, and some. it might not be called blue, but it's going to be a blue fragrance. But I don't know which order, but I would think next is either going to be a Parfum, Spice Bomb Parfum, or Spice Bomb Elixir. Mark my words. But thank you for the super chat, my man. Let me think about that. Absolute favorite fragrance under $50. That's an interesting number. Hmm. I got a lot that I really like on, that cost under 50 bucks. Whew, that's tough, man. That requires a decent amount of thought. Well, hell, I don't know. To just pick one. Damn, that's that's like the hardest question I've been asked today. I, I don't know. That's a damn hard question. I think I got to go with what's one of the greatest ever, which didn't make the 10, but very influential fragrance for me personally on my personal journey, Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue Pour Homme, the original Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue. I think I got to go with that. Yeah, because that's a pivotal fragrance. It used to be in this 10. It's just not anymore. There's too much phenomenal has happened in my collection since. Your own Parfum just came in the mail. It's going to be my first time smelling it. Well, Kingdom Sense, I hope you very much enjoy it. I got a Dollar Tree hat. <laughs> Why I sell Cologne Blue reminds me a little bit of Aqua 2018, same perfumer. That's fair. I just like if you mix that with Loam. That's fair. That makes sense. The dry down of Latafa, she, she on silver, reminds me of One Million Lucky. Okay. Kevin with the $5 super chat. What's up, everyone? Anyone have any experience with Ambassador Intense? I have a little bit of experience with it, and I have a bottle on the way. I'm assuming. You've noticed that they have it in stock at Fragrance Buy because I just bought it from Fragrance Buy too. So this falls in between Latafa Asad and Sauvage Elixir. It's going to remind you of both if you've smelled either or both. This is way better than Asad. And it's not as good as Elixir. It's not as good as Sauvage Elixir. But it does have more complexity. The quality doesn't come across as good, as good as Sauvage Elixir. It's not as strong. This is more resinous and ambery than it is just crazy spicy. It's a little bit more synthetic smelling, but, you know, I dropped 100 bucks on the 100 ml, and I'm super excited to get the bottle. I think it's really good. I think it's like, a, you know, first impressions, I think I gave it a 7.5 or an 8, something like that. I forgot what I said in yesterday's stream because I gave it a first impressions. Right? Let's just call it 7.5, very good. Um, Blind by safe if, if, you're familiar with Sauvage Elixir or Latafa Assad or Alexandria at Sauvage Elixir or Making Sense Elixir 4.0 or uh, whatever Kevin Essential Obsessions, whatever his is called. I forgot. I have it. Any of the Sauvage Elixir style fragrances, if you're familiar with that and you like that, you'll probably like this. 
It doesn't smell, again, it doesn't smell exactly like Sauvage Elixir. I'm not saying that. It does smell in the same vein, though. It will remind you of it early on. But it does start to take its own path. A lot of licorice and stuff like that as it starts to dry. Resins. It's a little bit smoky. It's good. I like it. But thank you for the $5. I appreciate that. Just wanted to say love and appreciate everything you do. Well, Russell, I appreciate you, sir. Thank you very much. Galleria Mall is goaded. That is a badass mall. Kareem's in the house. Good to see you, my man. Kevin had a bottle of Ambassador Intense, but sold it. Good fragrance, but very similar to Sauvage Elixir, so it was redundant. It is redundant. It is. And it's not as good. It's not as good. If I got to pick, I'm keeping Sauvage Elixir. So that's fair. Azaro Wanted is my favorite Invictus clone. Basically, Savage Electric. Yeah. No note spoilers. I think Ambassador is more versatile. From what I've heard, it's Mango Savage, basically. The regular Ambassador. I have a 50 ml coming of that. That's totally blind. I've never smelled that one, but I've heard from enough people that it's basically Fruity Savage, which sounds great. I looked at the notes, a couple different peppers and mango and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. That does. It, the note breakdown does look good. And Fruity Savage sounds good to me. That lasts long and are unique for following winter. I live in Minnesota, so it's already getting cooler. Um, that are unique. At 16, damn near anything you're wearing is going to be unique in your crowd, honestly. Um, Thirty dollars, damn. Depends on your style, really. Because if you want something that's fresh but still works in the cold, I would say something like Ephla Parfum from Fragrance World. It's more like Wyla Parfum, which is the best Y for the cooler weather. Um, but it depends. I don't know if you want something because that's a blue fragrance. But it depends on your taste, really. Maybe off 9, 9 p.m. Smell like ultra male. Fruity, sweet, and spicy. Something like off 9, 9 p.m., you can get that for around 30 bucks. Crazy strong, too. Agreed. Everyone wears a sod here. Ooh. Okay, yeah, so you want to avo avoid that, then. I'm glad I didn't say a sod. I'm forward to winter, so I can wear a Pasha de Cartier Absolute. Montrese is in the house. What's going on, Montrese? Let me find a good stopping point. We're about to shut it down. We're at an hour and a half at this point. We're in Windsor. There's a good one. That's that's a little more than I would recommend for a 16 year old though. The reason I, I was thinking more stuff to recommend to uh, to Sugar Dude 27, but Windsor's phenomenal and you can get it in that price range. But that's a I could see you saying it smells like an old man sugar sugar uh what is it sugar dude? Yeah, I can see because it's it's definitely a mature smell. It's phenomenal. I have multiple bottles. Kudos to Montrees for rocking that one. It's phenomenal. And the Saunders what got me into Fragcom. Thanks to Ross. I still like my English laundry fragrances, man. Uh, Riviera. Riviera's kind of, I like that more than Cambridge Night these days, I think. Or Tahitian Water. Tahitian Water is not that long ago. I'm trying to find tobacco for $30. Ooh. Alhambra? I mean, if you can find it, it goes in that price range, but that's a really good one. What's going on? Got it off Joma Shop for $25. There you go. My favorite under 50, Sean John, 3 a.m. Ooh, ah, that's such a good one. 50 Vintage Green by Landslide. The way it was in your 10, so Kyler's right there with you. Yep, Kyler knows. There he goes. Three bottles, damn. AM, good to see you. Glad you were able to make it. He's right at the tail end. We're about to shut it down here in just a second. We went a bit longer than usual. Because uh, we stayed on topic for quite a while. And there's zero way I could have only 10. Even trying to only have 20 to 30 is almost impossible. Look, I wouldn't want to have to whittle it down to 10. It's fun to talk about a what-if scenario. I wouldn't want to have to. 
I, I would prefer to not. Aqua, Aqua Atlantique, but was thinking about getting a Cinziali Blue. Would it be redundant? A little bit. Aqua Cinziali Blue is not aquatic at all. That's where the big difference lies. Because Aqua Atlantique is very oceanic, saltwater marine, whereas you don't get that from Aqua Cinziali Blue. Aqua Cinziali Blue is more, a little bit of citrus, uh, the lavender tonka bean combos, a little bit of powdery. There's a little bit of earthy green notes. Uh, the Cipriol oil comes across a little earthy and green with the woodiness. Um, slight redundance, but if you were to put them side by side, you'd be like, nah, they're not the same. And you get a lot more spice out of Aqua Cinziali Blue. It's very fresh spicy. It's like the main accord is fresh spicy. Um, I'm going to say if I had to put a percentage on how redundant, I would say like 30 to 40% redundant because they're both blue, but they're very different blues. Like they're both great alternatives to Dylan Blue, but on different sides of the spectrum. Like Aqua Cinziali Blue smells like Dylan Blue mixed with Aqua Porum. Like that you know, seaweed, salt water mixed with Dylan Blue, shower gel. Whereas a little bit of Dylan Blue's richness, just a little bit, is in Aqua Cinziali Blue. That's why I say it's a good alternative to Dylan Blue, but it doesn't smell like Dylan Blue. So it's the other side of the spectrum. I know it's kind of complicated the way I'm explaining it, but I'm trying to give you as much detail of in into my thought process as I can. So I'm going to say not really just because there's no aquatic nature to Aqua Cinziali Blue at all. Aqua Cinziali Blue for me is better spring, fall, winter. And obviously Aqua Atlantique's a warm weather scent for the most part. Ideal scenario, warm weather. Hope that helps. Hit the like button, 10-4. Wear the shower gel fragrance. So I mean, some most people don't wear cologne. If they do, it's designer stuff. Well, apparently they got some people in the know out there in Minnesota, Paul. You know who's in the house was going up. Oh, must be freezing because it won't let me pin anything. Yep, must be. Here we go. Now it's letting me pin. It's taking its good old time. It was freezing for a second, I guess. Signature leather to back. Whiskey section, that's a monster for the cold for sure. Thanks, Ross, for your time. Jeffrey, thank you for being here, my man. They just managed to pick up Prada Amber, 68 pounds, hard to find, just so unique. It's beautiful. It's so good. I haven't worn that one in a while. It's great for the, the fall season, too. Try Eros EDT. Well, he's trying to be a little bit more unique. That's the thing. That's why it, it was such a challenging question because he doesn't want run of the mill, and that's that's a run of the mill answer. I was trying to avoid that, <laughs> you know, because the arrows popped in my head, too. Got about 10 English laundry. Oh, I don't really drink. A fruity drink here and there with the wife by the beach just to appease her basically eros is crazy <laughs> so on that note i think uh thanks you i'll get it well i hope you enjoy it i hope you enjoy it. a lot of people bought th that bottle because of me that's that fragrance is more synonymous with my channel than any other and it didn't make the 10 it got bumped this year you know but if, if i was doing revamping the keep 10 cheapies it's still gonna be in there it'll never move from there because they'd have to discontinue it for it to not be a cheapie anymore but on that note, we're going to go ahead and shut it down, guys. I appreciate you being here. We did a little over an hour and a half. It's typically a bit longer than I do when I'm by myself. Normally when I have somebody else, we'll do longer than that. But I appreciate all of you that that showed up. I appreciate everybody that donated Super Chats to the channel. I greatly appreciate that. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and great rest of your week. Um, tomorrow's live stream is going to be a first impressions, initial thoughts on the two newest releases from Sphinx Fragrances. That's what's right there. I have what's next to it right there is an Abercrombie and Fitch fragrance I found at the rack stores yesterday. I need to finish filming that video. Uh, so that might be tomorrow's video. I got another video with Parfum Flankers ranking my favorites. Um, so I got a few pieces of content to decide what comes out tomorrow. But uh, for those of you that didn't watch the Paris Corner Fresh Fragrance video today, please check that out if you have some time and you're interested. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thank Again, thank you all for being here. You know, have a great rest of your day.